OK, here we have problem 51 uh, that we're going to solve using the uh, method of free body diagrams. The problem asks us to find the acceleration of the two block system and the tension in the string. Here we have the aluminum block sitting on top of the steel wedge um, and the copper block resting on the angled portion of the steel wedge. The aluminum block is 2 kilograms. The copper block is 6 kilograms. The plane is angled at 30 degrees, and from a table of values of coefficients of friction for copper on steel and aluminum on steel, we have these values here. These are going to be kinetic values of the coefficient of friction as opposed to static because the system is going to be moving. So we proceed by drawing the free body diagram for each portion of the system. So I'll start with the aluminum block. The aluminum block is on a flat surface. Therefore, the normal force points straight upward, and pulling straight downward on that is mg, the weight of the block. And this is m1g, so I have to be specified that it's the mass 1, since we have two masses in this problem. The string is pulling directly to the right, and we're going to call that tension t. And since there's friction present in this problem, if the block is going to move to the right, then the friction is going to resist that motion, Therefore, the frictional force will point to the left. There are no additional forces in this particular, um, for this particular mass. Therefore, my free body diagram looks complete. Now, for my free body diagram for mass 2, I have two choices. I can orient everything in a straight, traditional up and down and left to right uh, coordinate system, where we would use normal x and y orientations, or I can use uh, a tilted system where it is the X motion or the horizontal motion is along the plane and motion perpendicular plane. Generally, when you're doing a free body diagram for a, an inclined plane problem, it's much more convenient to work in the angled coordinate system. So I am going to imagine my plane as that's my X direction and this is my Y direction. This way, a lot of the vectors are already resolved into components for me. There's a normal force upward, and we learned already that in the case of, a, of an inclined plane, the force perpendicular to the inclined plane is mg cosine theta. This again is going to be m2g cosine theta. The force along the plane, again, which we've already derived, is mg, m2g sine theta. Force down the plane is mg sine theta. Force perpendicular to the plane, mg cosine theta. Since the object is moving down, the friction would resist that motion, and this will be friction, and we're going to use that as F2. This one will be F1. This is normal force 2. This is normal force 1. I have to make sure that all of those things are labeled differently because the I don't want to confuse myself when it's time to solve with uh, thinking that the normal forces are the same. They aren't. They're different. Different masses in different situations. The only force I'm left here to worry about is the tension, and the string is tending to pull the object back up the plane, so I'm going to put another force vector up the plane called T. And that is the same between the two because it's the same piece of string. So my free body diagrams are complete. I now need to execute Newton's second law for each of these free body diagrams. So I'm going to take this one first, and I'm going to convert it into some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction. In the x direction, I have two forces. So I'm going to call to the right positive and to the left negative. So I'm going to say t minus f1 is equal to, and this is in the x direction, the object is moving in the x direction, so this would equal m1 times a, the acceleration of the system. If I do the free body diagram, or sorry, the force equation for the y motion, I see two forces. I'm going to call up positive and down negative, so this would be n1 minus m1g equals, and this would equal ma again, but the object does not accelerate in the y direction. It's accelerating horizontally, so acceleration in the y direction is zero. So that makes this total equal 0. I will now proceed to solve. And I can find that, that taking solving this y, so I'm going to continue with the y equation here, 
I get N1 equal to M1G, which in our case would equal 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. I do not use a negative sign here on the negative on the 9.8 meters per second squared because I've already dealt with the direction of the vector with my positive or negative sign in my equation. So we're just always going to use g in these problems as a positive value 9.8. So n1 is going to equal 19.6 newtons. Now I'm going to take my force equation in the x direction and solve for a few things. T minus friction. We know that the general equation for friction is equal to mu times the normal force. In our particular case, it's going to be the coefficient of friction for this block, which is aluminum. So we're going to use the aluminum one. So that would be 0 0.47. Actually, I'm going to write it out. In, um, this is going to equal mu aluminum on steel times the normal force 1, because that's what's holding it against the surface, is equal to M1A. I can now substitute in values that I know. T minus 0.47 times 19.6 newtons. You'll notice that I got that from the line immediately above it. Is equal to 2 kilograms times acceleration. So there's one of my equations. I will do the same thing with the um, with the second free body diagram. So some of the forces in the y prime direction, that's this direction perpendicular to the plane, is going to equal n2 minus mg cosine theta. It's going to equal 0. So n2 is going to equal mg cosine theta, which is going to equal, this is a 6 kilogram block, times 9.8, times the cosine of 30 degrees. So I get N2 is equal to some number here. Looks like 50.9 newtons. Now I have to do some of the forces in the X direction. And I think just to give myself a little bit, uh, I should be able to fit in here. Some of the forces in the x prime direction, I am going to get, now I got to get my positive and negative sign right. In my first diagram, I called to the right positive. You'll see that this, this t was positive pointing to the right. When the pulley goes around the pulley, the right positive is down the hill. That's the same orientation. So I need to orient these, or assign, assign positive and negatives to these vectors in that same orientation, which means that I get minus t minus f2 plus mg sine theta equals m2a. So I'm now going to solve that the same way I did before, which would be minus t minus mu of the copper times the normal force number 2 plus m2g sine theta equals m2a. I now know the value of the normal force number two, and I know the value of the copper coefficient of friction, so I can substitute in for that. And I'm going to write in below here a little bit, uh, a little bit farther to the left here. Minus t minus 0.36 times 50.9 newtons plus 6 times 9.8 meters per second squared, that's 6 kilograms, times the sine of 30 degrees, has to equal 6 kilograms times A. So I'm going to do those calculations here real quick. So rewriting my two equations, I have 
I have this equation and this equation. And when I rewrite it, I'm going to combine this 18.3 and this 29.4. So taking this one first gives me T minus 9.21 newtons equals 2A. And taking the second one, I have minus T plus 11.1 .1 newtons equals 6A. I am going to choose to do this by the addition subtraction method. Here, tension appears as positive in one equation and negative in the other. So if I just add these equations together, I get T minus T, which is zero. I get 9.1 or 9.21 newtons, negative 9.21 newtons, plus 11.1 .1 newtons, or um, 1.89 newtons. has to equal, so 2 plus 6 is 8 kilograms times A. So I can get A is equal to 1.89 newtons over 8 kilograms, which is equal to 0 0.236 meters per second squared. I can now back substitute into this top equation, and I can get that T is equal to 9.21 newtons plus 2 times 0.236 meters per second squared, which would equal something. Uh, so the tension in the string is equal to 9.68 newtons. So hopefully these are our two answers for problem 51 if we did all of our algebra and, um, and arithmetic correctly.